I am what some might call an extreme non-completionist. I stop playing a game as soon as it loses my patience and enjoyment. I've given up on the final level or boss of some games when I found them to be more frustrating than they're worth, and I've stopped a number of games after a few hours when I realized that it wasn't going to work out for me. However, I don't ever consider myself truly done with things. If I stop playing a game, it doesn't mean that I never intend to play it again. There's always the possibility that I'll come back to it years later and discover that I love it. I've stopped playing Xenoblade Chronicles after about 8 hours of just not getting into it. It might seem weird for me to talk about a 60 to 100 hour game after only 8 hours of playtime, but I think it's important that I figure out why this game isn't working for me, so that I can fit it into the grand narrative of my feelings about action RPGs, which is the goal of this show to explore. For those who don't know, Xenoblade is the latest in the beloved Xeno franchise, which began with Xenogears in 1998. Despite Squaresoft shafting the game's budget, Xenogears was a very successful game that still sits atop the favorites lists of many RPG fans. The game's director, Takahashi Tetsuya, left Square a year after the release of Xenogears along with a bunch of other staff who then founded Monolith Soft with an investment from Namco. Monolith then made Xenosaga episodes 1 through 3 between 2002 and 2006, but the series was canned before they could make the planned episodes 4, 5, and 6, and Namco sold the company to Nintendo in 2007. Thus we move on to Xenoblade Chronicles, released for the Wii in 2010, or 2011 if you live in Europe, or 2012 if you live in the United States. This might be a good time to mention that because I actually played this game on the Wii, I wasn't able to capture any footage from it. There's quite a bit of video from the game on YouTube, but none of it really suits my needs, and I don't want to sort through hours of someone else's footage. Therefore, I'm going to try my best to keep this interesting without any video. Graphically, Xenoblade Chronicles sadly reeks of lost potential because the Wii is trash. The game has a huge world, not just in the amount of explorable land, but in the scale of it all. The area I stopped in was a massive valley with huge, awesome cliffs, and it's all explorable with no load screens whatsoever. This should be worth shitting my pants over, but it isn't because the game isn't good looking. Everything in the game is muddy and aliased, and the camera is almost always occupied with the ground, so you don't end up seeing the big epic landscapes as much as you should. To change the camera, you have to hold down a button and move the camera with the control pad, which is annoying, and you have to reposition it again before you do any fighting. The world of Xenoblade Chronicles reminds me a lot of the one from Terra Online, in that both of them have sweeping landscapes and epic scale, but Terra is so many levels prettier than Xenoblade that it almost negates Xeno's accomplishment. Moreover, while the landscapes are epic in Xenoblade, the smaller scale design sense falters. For instance, the first major city is very large, but rather than being cool, it's just a pain in the ass to get around. This town is so boring to look at and not designed with any really memorable traits. I know it's unfair to keep comparing this game to Terra, but just look at how much more interesting the major cities in that game are in comparison. I've walked around the towns in Terra for hours doing nothing just because they're awesome, whereas walking around town in Xenoblade for an hour was a boring hassle. Even the character designs are unmemorable. Everyone dresses like a blitzballer from Final Fantasy X. Each character's appearance changes depending depending on what they're wearing, but this just means that everyone looks ridiculous because the combination of powerful armor aren't necessarily designed to look good together. Anyway, since we're kind of mired in negativity at this point, I'll mention something unexpectedly great about this game. I never thought I'd say this, but I love the dub in Xenoblade Chronicles. Ordinarily, I'm one of those guys who whines about not having a Japanese voice option because too many American dubs are god-awful, but this game was dubbed in the UK, and quite honestly, I might just be biased because I love listening to British accents. I've given the Japanese audio a fair shake, and it's got some actors and actresses whom I know well from a decade's worth of anime, which may be why that version just sounds average to me. Maybe it's because the UK version isn't very dramatic, except when it needs to be. I love that down-to-earth feeling as it makes the characters easier to relate to. Unfortunately, whether you're playing in English or Japanese, you've got to deal with all the goddamn battle shouts that go on constantly in each fight. I've never understood JRPG's fixation on battle shouts because they get repetitive and annoying in a matter of minutes. Thankfully, I learned to tune them out after a couple of hours, just stopping to cringe whenever Ryan yelled, IT'S RHYME TIME! Xenoblade's music is pretty good, especially on its own, though it mostly stood out to me when it became grating as it did in Tefra Cave. Thankfully it wasn't annoying enough to get stuck in my head like that stupid song I used in my Dungeon Explorer review and cannot unhear. The same can be said about the sound effects, which I can't call to mind except for the annoying ones, like when you're walking on sand and all of your characters have the same footstep sounds pounding at once. Returning to positivity, despite the game's lackluster graphics, the cutscenes are brilliantly directed. Each of them is tense and exciting, elevating early parts of the story to be interesting even though so little is yet known about the plot. Often I found myself wanting to continue the story so much that I was trying to rush to the next area, only to find myself needing to slow down and do some leveling. Getting into the actual mechanics of the game, I'll start with its biggest strength, which is minimized consequences for dying. In Xenoblade, you don't lose anything when you die. No experience, no items, no nothing. Since there are no items that need to be used in battle anyway, you don't even have to worry about using all your potions on a boss only to die and have to go get more. The full consequence for dying is that you get respawned at one of the game's frequent checkpoints
points and all the monsters are respawned. This is a really huge deal because one of the most important things for me in a game is the feeling of making progress. Having to replay levels with my experience and items reset is never fun. It's only frustrating and takes me out of the experience. In Xenoblade you always progress. Even if you die again and again you always come out just a little bit stronger than you were last time you tried. This is especially important because Xenoblade is a very difficult game and there are no shortages of ways to die from accidentally aggroing a much higher level enemy to jumping off the side of the world. It reminds me of Dark Souls in this regard. Both games will waste you constantly but leave you with the means to get stronger and wiser because of it. Xenoblade's combat caught me completely off guard because it plays like an MMORPG in the vein of World of Warcraft. You go into battle with a tank and a healer and you must keep track of aggro and where your character is positioned in relation to an enemy. Your character auto attacks whatever enemy you have targeted while you use the control pad to select skills, each of which has its own cooldown. This system isn't nearly as clean as being able to click on enemies and use number keys for attacks, but it works decently enough. I almost wished I could select targets using the Wiimote's motion sensing just because it's such a pain to change targets with the control pad, but considering how much trouble I have just getting through the startup menu, this probably wouldn't be helpful for me at all. It's cool that you can run up to enemies and initiate combat right there in the field, but I've had an alarming number of instances where in pressing Z didn't target an enemy until I pressed it like five times. Combat doesn't initiate unless you Z target even if an enemy attacks you, and then you must give the attack command before your computer control characters will act, so this is a problem. Xenoblade is a very large game, not only in scope, but in complexity, to the point that I think every time Monolith Soft came up with a new mechanic, they set out to make it as complex as possible. The only way I can do justice to this complexity is to explain it in depth, so hold on to your hats. This could get confusing. To start with, there's a shit ton of gear, and the stats on gear are never straightforward. Every piece has its strengths and weaknesses, so you must consider the stats of the character you're equipping it to and what kind of build you're going for with that character. Sometimes gear has gems attached to it that can't be removed, which I don't see the point of, but I guess it's an easy way to further the randomization of drops. Some gear has open gem slots, so you'll want to consider what gems your character needs for their build and how gems can make up for the faults of the gear. To get gems, you forge them from materials collected from enemies. Each material has percentages of multiple qualities. For instance, a material can have 15% attack increase and 17% special attack increase. To create a gem, you must use a number of materials whose percentages of one quality add up to 100. Hopefully the on-screen footage is making this more clear. What this means is that you must consider which materials should be used for which gems, and if you get really serious about perfecting the gem system, you'll want to keep watch of what materials you need to be saved for their unique properties. Forging a gem requires two characters working together, each with their own roles in the process. Your combination of characters affects the outcome of the gem depending on what kind of gem it is. We're talking about fractional differences in the creation of items which create fractional differences in other items that create fractional differences in your stats. Each character has multiple skill trees they can follow depending on exactly what you want them to do in battle, and they also build up skill points which you use to level up each individual skill. Once you're in battle, you have to think about how your character's attacks work in tandem, especially during the combo attacks. There's also a system wherein you'll see a vision of an upcoming attack and have to tactically avoid it by commanding your teammates to do or not do certain things. These future attacks come in three forms, each with three different levels of power, so you've got to sort that shit out while juggling cooldowns and making sure that you're standing in the right spot so as to maximize damage and manage aggro and FUCK! Also, how well your characters work together is affected by their affinity for one another, which depends on finding heart-to-heart -heart moments for them to share and partying them together. I don't even know to what extent this system affects other parts of the game. Besides the zany amount of min-maxing, Xenoblade also has a bloated quest system whose complexity is indefensible. There are a shitload of quest givers in the towns and plenty more in the fields, some of whom give multiple or branching quests. It's very possible to make a quick run through town and accrue 40 to 50 quests. There's no reason not to accept them all, either, since completion isn't obligatory and most of them can be completed without conscious effort. At worst, they crowd your quest book, which is completely unhelpful anyways. It doesn't tell you where the enemies or items you need to find are located, so I usually completed quests just because I was killing every enemy and picking up every item anyway. Some quests require you to find NPCs in town, and those are the nightmarish ones, because each NPC is only outside at certain times of day. Whomever you need to find is marked on your minimap, but only when you're within 50 yards of them, so you wind up running all over town looking for people, then doing it again at night to find the ones you missed. Thankfully, the quests are completed automatically automatically, because if I'd had to track down 50 NPCs to turn in their quests, I'd lose my shit. If that's not enough, you also have affinity stats with like half of all the quest givers, which are specific to whichever characters you talk to that NPC with. I've yet to witness the consequences of this, but if it means I have to match the characters in my party to the correct NPC in order to get quests, then it's gone too far. What sucks about this is that the EXP bonuses from quests aren't even a huge deal. Mostly you get money and items to throw at the min-maxing clusterfuck. Of course, it's not necessary to perfect every detail of everything in order to beat the 
the game. If you're leveled enough and at least paying attention to gear and gems, then you're doing enough to proceed. The point of all this is only difficulty up to a certain point, beyond which the point is perfectionism. I have a difficult time getting into complex stat systems. I'm the type to try and muscle my way through with minimum effort, and if I really can't proceed, I'd rather grind by fighting than by sitting around in menus or tracking down items. And that's where my problem lies with this game. I don't enjoy the combat. Auto attacks are unsatisfying, and there's so much to keep track of that I never quite feel like I'm on top of things. Unless I'm totally crushing the enemy, I'm never sure the battle's going well. And then you throw in shit like future visions that can kill you in one hit, or enemies that can only be hurt by certain combos, and I start feeling like my luck with the AI is playing a bigger role than I am. For me, playing Xenoblade Chronicles is like playing Skyrim. It's a huge game full of things to do, but none of it is stuff I'm interested in doing. Clearly there are people who love doing those things, since like Skyrim, Xenoblade reviews incredibly well. I've seen it praised as the best game on the Wii by most of the RPG fans who've played it, and it even overshadowed Skyward Sword as the best Wii game of 2011 on a lot of best of lists. I just personally don't get enough out of it. I do love the cutscenes, but I don't love them so much that I want to keep playing just to know what happens. I want to love the epic landscapes, but more than making me want to play more Xenoblade, they end up making me want to play Terra Online, which is one of my favorite games specifically because the combat is so goddamn satisfying. I'll probably pick up Xenoblade again sometime in the future just to see if I'm ready for it then, but for now, it's going on the shelf. I have no rating for this game as of yet because I don't think I've spent enough time with it to understand my feelings about it completely. Anyway, that's all for this episode. If you liked it, comments, likes, and subscriptions are all greatly appreciated. If there are any games you'd like to hear me talk about, go ahead and comment your suggestions. Next week, I'll probably be talking about a game which I really enjoy. See you next time.